Hi there, I'm uh, Dr. Ian Campbell. I work at the University of Edinburgh as a Buziki Research Fellow in Metabolic Psychiatry. I'm diagnosed with bipolar disorder type 2 and have been uh, using a ketogenic diet and uh, researching a ketogenic diet uh, in a clinical academic setting uh, at the university to try and understand what are the mechanisms and how this might be useful in mental health conditions. So for me, um, bipolar disorder, depressions were always the hardest aspect of it. You really get plunged into this state where you have very low energy, um, you can't function, you can't think, you can't feel, and you're really sort of struggling to stay alive sometimes during these depressions. And the way I try to describe it to people is it's much more like a physiological state. It's not just a mood, it's a whole state in the body where there's very profound deprivation of energy and function. And I, I almost describe it a little bit like kind of being deprived of oxygen. You're really struggling to catch your breath. Your, your body's physiology is struggling to produce energy and stay alive. And you can see this in the blood markers of bipolar patients with things like elevated lactate, markers of mitochondrial dysfunction. It really is a whole body physiological state that you're thrown into. And that's why you can't move or think or feel or function in these uh, depressions. And then I'd have periods of hypomania where I'd be kind of productive and uh, able to think more quickly for periods of time. But then I'd go back into the depressions. And at the time I was, um, uh, long before I was an academic, I worked in the music industry. Um, I was the music producer for an um, uh, uh, interactive entertainment company called Rockstar Games. And I worked on games like Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption. And it was around this time that I started experimenting um, with everything I could possibly try. I made a Google Doc and I put every possible thing that I thought I could do to improve my health. And it was really uh, kind of, I was going to try and fight for survival. And it was really driven by, I wanted to have a family. I wanted to have a kind of life. And I could see that none of these things were going to be possible for me to, to work or to have a family or to, to have any kind of quality of life if I didn't really try hard to fix this. So I started working through all these different options I tried an unbelievable amount of things and I eventually decided I'm just going to at least try to lose weight. I was heavily overweight at the time and I wanted to try and uh, at least be as physically healthy as I could be and see if this would help in some way. So I, I came across the, this thing called the new Atkins diet. It's actually a kind of form of ketogenic diet. I didn't understand this at the time, uh, but I, I just adhered to this very strictly. And I noticed um, one time I was going to work uh, commuting and for the first time since I can remember, I really felt this weight, this incredible weight of depression lift from my mind for the first time. And it, it was really confusing to me at the time because I wasn't aware that it was the diet causing this. I just knew that for the first time I was feeling something different and I was feeling clear headed and objective and normal and my mind was at peace and I could feel something was physically very different. But I didn't understand what it was at the time. And over the weeks, I, 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 I kind of put it together that maybe this diet that I was doing was having some effect in causing these periods of wellness. And I told my father, he's a professor of medicine, and we've been through many times of illness. And I was saying, I think there's something about this diet that's um, changing something. And so I started researching. I learned about ketosis and that the body goes into periods of ketosis on this kind of, um, at the time it was this new Atkins diet, which puts you into periods of ketosis. And I started then taking exogenous ketones like MCTOLs, and I noticed that they, these were having a similar effect uh, to the diet. They were giving me some of this alleviation of symptoms, which was really remarkable to me because I didn't think anything could affect this. That I'd always experienced this my whole life. And so I, I really decided it was really a sort of complete turnaround in my life where I said, I have to understand this, you know, that if this could help other people or if this is going to work for other people, I have to really do everything I can to understand this and see if it could be useful. So I, um, over many years, uh, went into research and completed a PhD and then uh, eventually met uh, Jan Buzuki, who funded a pilot trial of a ketogenic diet um, at bipolar disorder because her son Matt had been through the same journey and uh, wanted to understand how this might be helpful for others. So we completed a, a study of a ketogenic diet. So really my journey from this was through um, Kind of uh, experiencing these symptoms and i sometimes compare it to like being bipolar it's like being a bit like on a cruise ship and you, you know imagine you're put in the captain's seat and you have all these controls and you can see that the ship is you know kind of uh, going under and that there's nothing you can really do and you're pressing all the different buttons trying all these different health techniques all these different medications all these ways of doing something and then you hit this one button 
that kind of seems to turn the engines back on, makes the ship work, and you have no idea what this button is. It's like, uh, you know, but 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 you know that whatever that is must be really important for whatever's wrong with the ship. And so for me, ketosis was that button. It was like, I don't understand this. I don't know what it does, but I know that when I hit this button, everything gets better. And so I, I need to really start researching under the hood and seeing what this is connected to and what it does. And that was my research, was trying to understand uh, what this uh, ketosis uh, does to my symptoms and how it works. So I think it's important with any way of approaching uh, bipolar disorder to know that uh, any treatment, no matter how effective, is not going to be uh, necessarily a cure for a condition like this. Um, and there are some cases in epilepsy where people have very long-term seizure remission, even lifelong seizure remission. And I hope as we understand interventions like this more, things like this might be possible in bipolar. But for me, I have to stay quite strictly on the diet to maintain the benefits uh, like many people with epilepsy, if I go off the diet, then within two to three days, my symptoms can return, particularly the depression is quite notable. So the ways I've tried to manage this are to use strategies like uh, using exogenous ketones to bridge periods where I have less control over the diet, say when you're traveling and um, exogenous ketones can be helpful as shown in epilepsy. They're not a solution or a long-term solution, uh, but they can be helpful in helping you through periods where if your sleep is disrupted, you can go out of ketosis, for example. And I find when traveling, for example, it's quite important to have exogenous ketones uh, with me. And I, I think also what we're seeing in metabolic psychiatry, and this is something we're researching, is that there's a lot of factors that play into metabolism. So this includes your sleep, it includes your diet, it includes your circadian rhythm, your light exposure. And all these factors are synergistic in making your metabolism healthy. So diet is a major pillar of that, but there's also sleep and circadian rhythm management and uh, stress reduction and all these things play into making your metabolism function well. So it's, a com it's really there's a combination of these metabolic therapies that you can use. And when one is uh, you know, less available, like sleep, uh, for example, if you're traveling or you have uh, young kids, for example, I have young kids and often have sleep, uh, disrupted sleep because of that, you can use like exogenous ketones or different strategies to bridge those things. And in times when you have less control over your diet, perhaps you can really optimize the sleep and light exposure. And so using these... I, these things synergistically I think is very helpful and I think this is because there's some aspect of bipolar I have a paper on this called metabolic plasticity you can read uh, that is a dysregulation of kind of very long evolutionary conservative mechanisms of metabolic and circadian type regulation and if you can give the right inputs to these systems it helps your health uh, and if you get the wrong inputs like artificial light at night um, bad nutrition, it can really dysregulate all these systems in the body that control your metabolism. So I, I think combining uh, healthy sleep cycles, stress reduction, uh, ketosis, uh, diet, uh, exercise, all these things uh, help to keep a person stable. I think if someone's learning about ketosis, the, the first thing to be aware of is that it's really important to work with your psychiatrist um, there, this is, we're at the very early stages of research in understanding this, and we, we hope, like in epilepsy, this can be very helpful to a lot of people, but we are at the early stages. And so it's very important to approach your psychiatrist about a, a change to your diet like this and to work with them, and, and hopefully also a dietitian uh, who can advise on how to do a ketogenic diet, because it, it's not easy to just go into a ketogenic diet in a medical sense. People can do this for kind of weight loss and and many people do in a casual way, but a, a medical ketogenic diet is a very different approach where you're trying to maintain ketone levels and, and specific nutrients and your, you need supplementation uh, in many cases and things to help manage the diet. So I'd recommend um, working with a psychiatrist and hopefully a dietitian uh, to manage this if you're uh, thinking of this. And, and one of the best ways to engage uh, with ketosis at this stage, if you're um, looking to try this is to engage in research. There's many clinical trials happening all across the world, around 20 clinical trials uh, that are underway to investigate this. So one of the best, most safest, controlled, and effective ways to try this would be to register for a research study. And there's quite a high likelihood there'll be one somewhere near where you are. Uh, and certainly in the coming years, I think that'll be increasingly possible. So I'd recommend uh, signing up as a research participant if you can, because you'll get the full spectrum of psychiatric care, uh, dietitian support, and uh, this is a very and it helps contribute to our understanding of the of the effects of ketosis as well.